All right, time to go teach. Hello and welcome to this episode of Tutor Tutors, continuing our unit on ecology and also continuing our lessons on the nutrient cycles. This is part two of a four part series as we go through the different nutrient cycles. Last time we went through the water cycle. Today, we're going to go through the carbon cycle. So today's only target of the day is to actually go through the carbon cycle. So here it is, the carbon cycle. That's what we're looking at. So remember, this is the part two of our biogeochemical cycles. Part three will be the oxygen cycle, and part four will be the phosphorus cycle. So the carbon cycle. First off, when we think about the carbon cycle, many of you will already be thinking about the fact that we have carbon in the atmosphere. And that carbon in the atmosphere is carbon dioxide. It is CO2 gas. And that CO2 gas is going to be taken in by the plant life, by our producers, and it is going to be taken in through this process called photosynthesis. That is the first step. That is how the CO2 is removed from our atmosphere naturally. Now, through the process of respiration, the CO2 will be returned to the atmosphere, and both plants and animals perform the process of respiration. So this plant is not only going to take CO2 out of the atmosphere, but it is going to return some CO2 back into the atmosphere. Now it doesn't return all of the carbon back into the atmosphere because it will be using some of that carbon to actually build itself. That is how the plant will grow because the plant is going to accumulate more carbon than it will actually release. Some of that stored carbon will be ingested by an animal and through the process of respiration, be released back into the atmosphere. But again, not all the carbon that is ingested by the animal is going to be returned to the atmosphere through the process of respiration. The animal is going to grow and develop, and as it does, it is going to build molecules using some of that carbon. So it will release less carbon than it's going to end up taking in through that process. As the plant and the animals die, they are going to decompose and go into the soil, and they are going to have some of their carbon stored in the soil. And if we have millions of years, they can form fossils and then fossil fuels such as coal, oil, peat. Those fossil fuels, they can be combusted. We can use them for energy. Through that process of burning fossil fuels, we release CO2 back into the atmosphere. This is obviously something that we talk about a lot when we're looking at ecology, is how much CO2 we release into the atmosphere and what effects that CO2 has upon our environment. But that is another way that CO2 is added to our atmosphere. CO2 though also can be dissolved the oceans. And as the CO2 is dissolved into the oceans, then we end up with this process called acidification because as the carbon dioxide is absorbed by the ocean, it forms carbonic acid, which is going to then reduce the pH of our ocean and cause them to get a little bit more acidic, which is another environmental problem that occurs from having too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So remember in our summary that nutrients, hey, they cycle within our biosphere. And CO2, well, it leaves the atmosphere both through photosynthesis and through dissolving into the oceans and then forming that acid. And one way that CO2 is released in great amounts into our atmosphere is through the burning or the combustion of fossil fuels. That's one of the main ways in which we have seen a massive increase in our CO2 in our atmosphere. And that is the overview for the carbon cycle. Next time we'll look at the nitrogen cycle. But until then, be awesome, stay awesome.